to another episode of the Clueless Dude's Real Tool of Reviews. On the left side, in the white with the black trim, we have the heart coming in at $98. On the right side, in the yellow with the black trim coming in between $100 and $150, depending on whether or not you catch it on sale, and it is on sale quite a bit. Both of them are 20 volts. Both of them have two-speed transmissions, and both of them are aimed at people that need something above an entry-level drill. I'm going to be testing both of them by doing side-by-side -side tests, by driving speed bits into 2x4s, driving speed bits into 2x4s, driving speed bits into pressure-treated 2x4s, doing lag bolt tests, and even in a 66-hole endurance test, and we'll even test them both in the dark, see how all the lights work. All right, guys, let's take a really quick, dirty look at both of them, and then we'll let the testing begin. Let's look at the drills side by side. Both of them are about 9 inches tall. However, in terms of length, there's quite a bit of difference. From the back of the DeWalt to the tip of the chuck is about 6 and a quarter inches, whereas from the back of the heart to the tip of the chuck is about 7 and a half inches. That makes perfect sense because the DeWalt is the Atomic Series, and the Atomic Series is, the, is DeWalt's Compact Series. So it makes sense that it would be a bit shorter. Both of them are 20 volts. Both of them have two-speed transmissions. And both of them have clutch settings on the top. If you need to limit the amount of torque, the drill pushes against, let's say, a screw going into a drywall where you don't want to strip it out. Both of them have torque settings. All right, guys, let's do some side-by-side -side testing and see which one is right for you. Our first test is going to be one inch speed bits into a 2x4 so you get an idea of how quickly these drills can go through regular lumber. Here we go. go. As you can see, neither the DeWalt nor the Hart had any issues going through that lumber with a 1-inch spade bit, so I'm going to mark them both as a pass. Any difference in time was operator issues and not the drill itself. So let's do something a little bit more challenging. We're going to switch from a spade bit to a speed bit. Speed bits have threads on the front that pull the bit through the wood and thus require a lot more torque. So let's see if either drill can do it or if they both can do it. Here we go with a speed bit test. Oh. Well, as you see, both of us passed the test rather easily, so let's make it a bit more difficult. Actually, let's make it a lot more difficult. Let's use two pieces of pressure-treated wood. Even a single piece of pressure-treated wood is harder to go through than normal lumber, but making it two should make it twice as good. Let's see if they can both go through two pieces of pressure-treated 2 by 4 with the same kind of speed bit. Here we go. All right, guys, we're going to do a test that's very similar to one that I just did. It's going to be a 1 and 1 inch speed bit going to two 2 by 4s except in addition to being two 2 by 4s it's pressure treated 2 by 4s Pressure treated 2 by 4s are harder to drill through, harder to screw through. So even though it's the same bit, even if it was only one thick, it would still be harder to do. But two makes it twice as hard, plus it's harder to go through because it's pressure treated. All right, guys, here we go. We'll see how the DeWalt does first, and then we'll try the heart. Three, two, one, go. All right, as you can see, as you can see, the DeWalt can't do it in speed two, so I'm going to switch it over to speed one. As a reminder, speed one is slower, but it's got more torque, so we'll see how it does. Three, two, one, go. Alright, it did it. I'm going to do one more just to show it wasn't a fluke. And uh, here we go. Again, speed number one. Three, two, one, and go. Okay, as you can see in speed number one, even though it's a lot slower, it's got a lot more torque, had no troubles going through. Two, Pressure treated 2x4s with a 1 and 1 8 inch spade speed bit. Not a spade bit, but a speed bit, which again in itself uses more torque than a spade bit. So pretty impressed. Let's try the same exact thing now, except with a hard tool. Here we go. And go. Alright, it seems like just like with the DeWalt, the heart cannot do it in speed number two. So I'm switching to speed number one, and we'll try it again and we'll see what it can do. Alright, it seemed like it did it. We'll do one more just to make sure it's not a fluke. Again, speed number one. Here we go.
There you go. Same thing. Uh, speed number one had no troubles. Went right through a one and one eighth inch speed bit through two pressure treated two by fours. Not a problem. All right, we'll have to try something a little bit harder. All right, drill fans, we're going to try something even harder, a lag bolt into three 2x4s, two of them pressure treated, just to test the limits of the drill, especially in speed number two, so we can see what it can do. All right, guys, let's get the testing started. It's time for another test. This is a approximately six inch long lag bolt. I'm going to be going through one, two, three 2x4s. The first two are pressure treated. The last one is just regular lumber because that's what I have. I'm going to be driving in first with the DeWalt, and then I'm going to try the same exact thing with the heart. Starting off with the DeWalt, I'm going to be using speed number two to start with, and then if it can do it in speed number two, great. If not, I'll switch to speed number one. Here we go. Three, two, one, and go. All right. That's as far as it was able to get in speed number two. I am switching to speed number one, and we'll see if it can do any better. Here we go. In three, two, one, go. There we go, all the way in, no problem. And I stopped it before it countersunk because I'm gonna have to take it back out. Let's try the same exact thing now with the heart and see how it does. Same exact test, this time with the heart. I have it in speed number two to start with. If it can do it, great. If not, I'll switch to speed number one. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, and go. All right, that's as far as it will go in speed number two. Switching to speed number one and trying again. And same deal, got it all the way down. I stopped before it countersunk because I have to get it back out, but it had no troubles doing it. So uh, pretty impressive. All right, let's try one more thing. I'm going to actually do the same exact thing, except this time with an impact driver so you can see the difference. And do something that's a little outside the scope of what's actually being tested in this video. I'm actually gonna use a DeWalt impact driver with the same kind of lag nut so you can see the difference. If you're not familiar with the difference between an impact driver and a drill, look in the description below and you'll see a link to a video that'll show you the difference. But I wanted to give you just a quick and dirty overview why it is people will also buy impact drivers. I want to stress to you that um, the drills both did it, but I felt like I was kind of pushing the limits of the drill where if I did this a lot, I'd be worried about damaging the motor or overheating them. Whereas in this case, uh, impact driver, this is exactly the kind of stuff it's made for. There you go. One other difference I want to point out with the impact driver is you notice I switched to just one hand and kind of almost like a loose grip. That's because the way the impact drivers are designed is it releases pressure several times a second and it kind of gives it a thud to move the bit and therefore your bolt a little bit at a time and therefore there's less kickback. And I just wanted to point that out. If you're trying to drive bolts or anything that's heavy where you're getting kickback and your drill doesn't have anti-kickback circuits or they're not working, Impact driver, you notice I did it again with just one hand, and I wasn't even gripping it that hard, and I had no troubles. It didn't slip out of my hand, and no, and no kickback at all, and yeah, so I'm just pointing that out, so that if you're someone is trying to use a drill to drive things into the wall, especially if they're heavy duty things and you keep getting kickback and hurting your wrist, try out an impact driver. Even an El Cheapo 12 volt impact driver would have no troubles putting that bolt into that wood. You know, it's kind of small, it's a lot slower, but it would still do it. So just keep that in your mind, back of your mind. If you're having kickback and you keep hurting yourself with your drill, try out an impact driver. Even an inexpensive one has a surprising amount of torque. All right, guys, but before we go back on the testing, I have a request. I pay for all this stuff out of my own pocket. I'm a retired guy and I do these videos just for fun, but I'd appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. No matter how many views I get, YouTube will not pay me until I get, I believe it's a thousand subscribers, and I'm nowhere near a thousand subscribers. I'm a brand new channel, and I'd appreciate any help you can give me, not by sending me money, although that'd be kind of nice, but not need it, but just by hitting the subscribe button. Subscribe button eventually equals payment, and payment equals not living under a bridge. All right, guys, back to some more testing. All right, Joel fans, sometimes you got to drill in the dark. Well... Let's take a look at the lighting systems on each of the drills, and we can decide which one is right for you. Here we go. It's a little bit of background first. 
Alright, before I show you the difference between the lighting systems for the DeWalt and the Hart by demonstrating them in the dark, I want to demonstrate them in the light. First of all, both the Hart and the DeWalt have the light down here, and it points up in a nice pattern. The idea is, when you pull the trigger, the light lights up, and it will light up the area where the bit and the screw head come together, or the wall and whatever it is you're screwing the bit into. It doesn't matter, it puts the light in the right spot. You also notice that this light has stayed on for quite a while after the trigger pull. Same thing here with the heart. As soon as you touch the trigger, they'll stay on for several seconds before turning themselves off. Now, the reason why that's important is this. Some of the cheaper, uh, some of the cheaper drills, like this one, this is a HyperTuff, and it's also a 20 volt. And you'll notice, the second I release the trigger, the light goes out. Well, the problem with that is this. Picture this, you're in a dark setting, and you don't want to grab a flashlight, because you can kind of sort of see, and you're trying to put your bit onto a bolt head, but the only way to light it up is to touch the trigger, which often will make the chuck spin, and thus the bit spin, and thus it's kind of hard to do. So you notice though, all three of these come from the bottom, so these two have the advantage of, with a quick pull of the trigger, they'll stay lit for a while, letting you hit the trigger to use it as a flashlight for a few seconds to line the bit up with the bolt. This one, it lights it up nicely, but again, on some of the cheaper drills, you don't get it, the light to stay on, so it's kind of hard to use. And then lastly, there's another style, and that is having the light right here underneath the chuck. When I first started looking at drills, I thought, well, that's pretty convenient. It'll light up the area where the bit and the chuck, where the bit and the bolt come together, but it doesn't. What I found is, when it's really this close, the chuck casts a shadow. It makes it a little bit harder to see, so here's the light. And as the light comes up, it hits the chuck and will cast a shadow in some cases, depending on how long the bit is that you're using. So, my preference now, going back, has gone from thinking that style is pretty cool to I really like them on the bottom. And then an additional benefit is I like them to stay on for a few seconds after you touch the trigger so that you can use it to line up the bit and the bolt. All right, guys, that's enough about lights. Without doing a demonstration, time to turn the lights off and try it out. By the way, if you find this kind of testing helpful, please hit the subscribe button because no matter how many views I get, even a million, I won't get paid by YouTube unless I get a thousand subscribers and I'm nowhere near a thousand subscribers. Time to turn the lights out and do some. Alright guys, you may notice that the screen is blank. That's not because your screen is broken or my camera is broken, but this is the screwing in the dark test. Alright guys, this is uh, the light from the, from the DeWalt and we're going to see how good it is at lighting up where the bit and screw head come together, and as you can see, it does a pretty good job there. Now this whole bubble is pre-drilled. I just did this for testing to make it a little bit easier, just so you can see the light. So there's the bit, there's the screw head, and you see where they come together. It's pretty good, uh, pretty good light, and as you can see, it's pretty easy to, to see what you're doing. All right, let's try the same thing again, except this time with the heart. All right guys, same thing. I've got the heart in front of me here, and as you can see, you can see where the bit is, you can see where the screw head is, or in this case the bolt head, and you can see it's very easy to see. There's no awkward shadows and no troubles lining them up, and here we go. And again, this is pre-drilled just for, for demonstrations of the light. All right, pretty good. One other thing I'll notice about both the DeWalt and the Hart is that the lights stay on after you release the trigger. We'll go ahead and see how long they stay on here in just a second. All right, guys, the Hart is on the left, the DeWalt is on the right. I'm going to tap the trigger and we can see how long the lights stay on. Three, two, one, start. All right, there we go. You can see how long the lights stay on for each one with a quick pull of the trigger. Both the DeWalt and the Hart are much easier to use than some of the other drills I've used in the past in the dark. The lights are really good. Okay, up to the main attraction, that is the endurance test. It will be 100 holes, 66 holes at 3 eighths, and then 44 holes at 7 eighths. It's going to be over two pieces of wood because I can't get all the holes in one piece of wood. I'm going to show the first piece of wood concurrently. That is the split screen so you can see them side by side. And then as the drills start having some issues, I will go ahead and show them sequentially one at a time so you can see how the drills did when the batteries were getting a little bit low or getting a little bit hot. All right, guys, here we go. I'm going to start the testing just about now. One, two.
There you go. All right, the 66 of the halts are drilled. 44 to go. The 66 are at 3 eighths of an inch, and the 44 to go are at 7 eighths of an inch. I'm going to show you in the next clip the first 12 of the 7 eighths inch holes being drilled by both the DeWalt and the Hart. And then after that, we'll go to another clip where we'll look at the DeWalt and Hart separately for the remaining holes. Well, it has even begun to slow down. Okay, guys, uh, I'm going to switch to another piece of wood, and we'll see what we can do. I have the 66 holes here, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12 here. So, uh, I'll keep going, and we'll see how many more we can do until it there starts to slow down. First 12 done. I'm going to go over and switch over to the other piece of wood, and I'll keep going. By the way, this battery has not been charged since I started cutting the first of the 66 holes, and it's going to stay right there until I get done with all 100 holes. All 100 holes, one battery. As you probably can tell from the overlapping voices at the end of the previous two videos, the next pieces of wood are coming out and they're going to continue drilling with the same exact battery with no recharging from where it left off. But unlike the previous videos where I showed them concurrently, I'm going to show the DeWalt first for the second piece of wood and then the Hart second again for the second piece of wood. But just know that both of them are going to be continuing right from where we left off. Here we go. All right, guys, I've done 66 holes at 3 eighths and I've done... 12 holes at 7 eighths, it's the same battery, nothing's been recharged. I just swapped to a new piece of wood, and I'm going to keep going, and we'll see how many we can do. So, uh, this will be hole number 13 at 7 eighths. Here we go. 3, 2, 1, and go. Well guys, I'm actually out of wood. This is the last two holes I can do before I start running into the other holes. Oh. Alright guys, this drill has passed the endurance test. It is 100 holes. It was 66 holes at 3 eighths and then 44 holes at 7 eighths. And it did it without a problem. It was not even slowing down at the end. And that's why we're drawing the line for the endurance test for the simple reason I'm running out of wood. But as you can see, if you're doing stuff day to day around the house, you're not going to have any problems with this at all unless you're drawing a heck of a lot of stuff. I'll tell you, I used this exact same DeWalt on a deck last year. And I worked on it all day, drilling hole after hole after hole, then driving screw after screw in, after screw in with an impact driver. And it took about eight hours of fairly consistent use to drain the battery. So that should give you an idea of where it is. I'm going to switch here to the heart and if it can do 66 plus 44, I'm going to call them both winners. All right, the next clip is of the heart after it's already done 78 holes on the first piece of wood. I decided to not show the second pieces of wood concurrently because things go a little bit different for the heart. Here we go. I got a piece of wood here with 32 marks on it. This is still the same battery, not charged. The drill has not been touched since I did the first 12 holes, and now I'm going to do 32 more. 32 plus 12, advanced mathematics, 44. 44 plus the 66 at 3 eighths equals 100 holes. So here we go. Three, two, one, go. All right, guys, this happens now uh, once before. This is actually a reshoot. This is the second time I'm shooting the scene. And the reason is the heart stopped at exactly the same spot last time. If we take a look, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And I'm on the 10th, so roughly 20 plus 
20 rows, I mean about 20 holes into the 32 that I was going to do. If I let this sit here for a few minutes, it will start back up. And again, if you're going to be doing continuous, 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 continuous drilling, this may kind of warm up a little bit. Um, it doesn't feel hot, but this has happened, like I said, once before, actually twice before. This is actually the third time I'm shooting it. Both times, it stopped more or less at the same spot. So I've learned I'm going to let it sit for about 10 minutes, and then I'll let it finish up. So I'm not going to touch it, not going to charge the battery, not going to do anything. I'm just going to let it sit for, I'm going to say actually more like 15 minutes just to be sure, and then I'm going to finish drilling. All right, it's been 15 minutes. I've let the drill cool down or do whatever it needed to do, and it is working once again. So what I'm going to do this time is we have 88 out of 100 holes done. I'm going to try to do the last 12 and see if it will finish up. I have not charged the battery. I have not touched the drill. It's been sitting just about here until I hit the record button, and we'll see if it can finish it. Here we go. Three, two, one, 12 holes left, go. That is 100, and just to check, I'm going to do two additional ones, just because why not? And last one. All right, so there you go. Um, it wasn't the battery; the drill is still going pretty strong, but it does appear that if you're doing 100 holes at once, the Dewalt had no troubles doing it, and the hard had a little bit. And admittedly. Just because of stabilization issues with leaning over when doing these shots from a distance, I am immediately putting my hand kind of like this over the back. But as you can see, I've been making a point to kind of push my palms up for most of it. And the vents are on the side, on the top, and on the side, and also along here and along the bottom. So putting my hand here, I don't think is blocking any vents. I just think maybe trying to do 66, 7 8 inch holes in a row might be a little bit too much for it. All right, guys, that's it. Time for some conclusions, but overall, unless you're doing hole after hole after hole after hole, and again, these are pretty good size holes, seven eighths, almost an inch, I think the heart would be fine. Is it as good as the DeWalt? Well, we'll discuss that in the conclusion. Thank you for your time, and by the way, I'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe key, as I say on every one of my videos, if I don't get a thousand subscribers, I thought it was 500, it turns out it's a thousand, if I don't get a thousand subscribers, I won't get paid by YouTube, if I don't get paid by YouTube, then I'm going to have to live under a bridge, and I don't want to live under a bridge. All right. Looking at the scorecard, you can see that both the DeWalt and Hart were more or less neck and neck on just about everything. The only difference was on the 100 hole test, the Hart needed to take a little bit of a nap, but then it came back to life and was just fine, and it was repeatable. It wasn't breaking down. It probably was just a safety circuit kicking in to keep it from overheating. All right, guys, time for the conclusion. Thank you for your time, and remember, if you like this stuff, please go ahead and subscribe. What's my conclusion? Well, the DeWalt, as always, feels fantastic. The chuck has a great ratcheting sense to it. As you click it in place, you know that bit's in place. It never needed to take a nap throughout the day. I've used the same exact DeWalt to do decking work in the past. Limited decking work, but still decking work, built a deck. And it worked great. The heart, on the other hand, the chuck on it feels good, but not quite as good as the one on the DeWalt. The heart also needed to take a nap 88 holes or so into a 100-hole test. Now, the thing about the 100-hole test is it was continuous drilling. Even if you're building a deck, at least the way I did it, was I drill a few holes, then grab the impact driver, put in a few decking screws. Drill a few holes, put in a few decking screws. So it wasn't a continuous non-stop drilling. And that's the only place where the heart kind of failed was it needed to take a nap and then it was fine in this continuous non-stop drillings. And again, it got 88 holes into a 100 hole test and there, the holes towards the end were 7 eighths of an inch, so almost one inch big. So I'm not going to say it's bad and it recovered, no problem. So, which one is right for you? Well, here's something I'm going to point out. In addition to just evaluating the drill, or if you're buying the impact driver, also look at the other tools in the line. Let's assume you want to make it a point to make sure that your tools all take interchangeable batteries. Typically, your batteries will only be compatible with tools from the same brand. In the case of DeWalt, the DeWalt battery will typically only work with DeWalt tools. In the case of Hart, typically the Hart battery will only work with Hart branded tools. So, with that being said, before you buy something, look at the other tools in the line and ask yourself, 
are these tools I'm going to want to buy? Does the line have everything I need? Do I really need the batteries to be compatible? And once you answer those questions, you can, it'll help you decide which one to get. I will point out that the DeWalt stuff, let's say you need to get a circular saw or something along those lines, is generally going to be pretty expensive. And the reason for that is they're really good. There's a reason why they're expensive. It's because they're really good tools, but it may be overkill for, let's say, a homeowner, but not overkill for, let's say, a contractor that's building decks or houses or whatever day in and day out. Obviously, that's money well spent. Whereas it may not be money well spent for a homeowner that's going to cut 20 or 30 boards and then stick it in the closet for five years, then cut 20 or 30 boards and stick it in the closet for five years. It just doesn't make sense. So look at the other tools and the prices of those other tools and then say, do I need the batteries to be compatible? And if you do, well, that should affect which one of the brands you get. All right, I'm going to point out one other thing, and that is on YouTube, I don't get paid until I get a 1,000 subscribers. So if you like this review and the other information I provided... I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe key. Also, if you're a professional and you've used heart tools professionally day in and day out, I kind of like to see your comments in the comment section because obviously in a three-day shoot, I can't simulate a year's worth of work. I can try my best, but I can't quite do it obviously in three days. So if you've been using heart tools day in and day out, especially in a professional setting, love to hear about it in the comments below. All right, guys, you have a great day. And again, thank you for your time.